<laughs> of course, none of the cameras are working. Y'all give me a minute. I'm having technical difficulties. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Why? I set you all up today. Okay, y'all give me just a minute. I don't know why everything wants to go crazy as we are live. The cutting mat works. The sewing machine works. Let me fix this one. Oh, goodness. Why? Why? Oh, the joys of going live anywhere, right? All right, let me put you here. <laughs> and one more that I have to fix. I set all of this up with plenty of time to spare. Plenty of time to spare. Oh, goodness. There we go. You can go there. All right. Everything else is working. Okay. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. Just want to make sure that we're going the way we're supposed to. Here we go. All right. One thing's for sure, if something's going to go wrong, it'll go wrong today, right? Hello, everybody. Hello. So great to see you. Uh, Sherry, I'm so glad you're here. I know you are busy working. I'm glad you're going to hang out with us. I totally understand about moderating. Thank you so much, Mimsy, for being willing to jump in and moderate today's video. Today, we are live. So if you're watching on the replay, feel free to skip around to all the good bits, all the fun stuff. And uh, if you're here live, I would love it if you hang out with us and chat in the live chat. Uh, one of the main reasons why we're doing the lives here on YouTube is so that we can spend time with one another, right? This is our time to fellowship and talk to everybody. And uh, yes, the live videos, I think they serve a purpose in fighting depression and loneliness anxiety they offer inspiration and we get to spend time with one another so hello everybody oh so we had a little bit of a technical technical issue today we're going to be making the scrappy pin cushion this camera is not set up exactly right anymore so the top of my head is gone it's so great to see y'all so great to see you so you know what? Okay, so before we begin today, I just want to give y'all a little pre-warning. Just a little pre-warning. Uh, we just got back late last night from Alabama. And uh, we kind of left spur of the moment. It was not a planned trip. Uh, Harlan's uncle in Alabama passed away. We wanted to go see his aunt. Uh, so sort of a spur of the moment trip. And so I've had not, you know, just like an hour and a half to prep for today's video. So if I seem a little scatterbrained, <laughs> uh, today we're just going with the flow, right? Uh, but I do have a plan in place. We're going to be making two uh, crazy quilt pin cushions, a circle one and a square one. A circle one and a square one. 
Lynn, you got a faster internet so you can Zoom. Yay! That is awesome. That is awesome. So uh, at, before we get started next week, <clears throat> thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next week, uh, I do have a few more pin cushion video ideas that I'm going to be sharing with you next week. Uh, but y'all, <laughs> there's probably endless pin cushion ideas out there. So even though this series will come to an end at the end of next week, uh, I'm hoping that the videos that we've shared already and the ones that I'm going to post have just sparked an interest and a passion for these pin cushions and sparked your creativity for them, right? And I really love them because they serve a, a you know, a purpose in our sewing space. You know, they serve a purpose, but they're also so pretty, right? They're so pretty. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and switch to the cutting mat. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> see, that camera's gone again. This is going to be a crazy live, y'all. It's going to be crazy. I don't know why everything wants to not work all of a sudden. <laughs> Give me just a second. I'm going to bring in... I don't know which camera that is. Now none of them want to work. <laughs> Let's just bring this one in. Whoa. Oh, goodness. One of those days. One of those days. All right. So, <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Now I have to look over here. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we took a trip to Indiana. And while we were there, Sally from the Creative Crew Group visited me at the campground and she brought me this lovely handmade pin cushion, y'all. I love it so much. It has a permanent home on my cutting table. You can see all of the pins in there. <laughs> this pin cushion has aided me through the last t-shirt quilt that I made for a client. So it has gotten a lot of use already and uh, isn't that just so pretty? I really, really love that. So it has inspired this whole pin cushion series and uh, also inspired a pin cushion swap, which this morning we just drew the names for. So uh, if you haven't been over on, on to Elfster and you're in the swap, guess what? You have a name waiting for you. And uh, yes, that is so much fun. So it has inspired these pincushion tutorial ideas and a pincushion swap. And uh, today I'm going to show you how easy you can make a pincushion just like this one. Or similar to this one, right? So this is what we're doing today. It's so great to see y'all. Yeah, the phone stand, the phone stand. So uh, I made two of the phone stands and we brought one in the RV for this trip that we took. And Harlan took over the phone stand. So I'm really glad that I made two because <laughs> I'm going to put one in the RV for myself. <laughs> and then uh, I'll probably be making more because I think it would be nice to have one right here in the workspace and maybe one next to the bed. I could set my phone up and see the time when I wake up in the middle of the night two times, right? <laughs> I think I'm going to put one next to the bed. Yeah, I am super excited for the swap too. I am really, really excited. So y'all, uh, again, y'all will uh, hopefully bear with me because I am just really scattered brained. I really am today, and I apologize. Uh, Stargazer, where can I ask you a question about your patterns on Etsy? Uh, 
if you want to, you can leave the live chat Stargazer and click on the description box. Open that up. There's a link that brings you right over to my Etsy shop. And through the Etsy shop, you can send me a message. So if you have a question about any of the patterns there, you can easily send me a message right through my Etsy shop. And then I get a notification that comes up on my phone. If you do it while we're doing the live, then I'll just I'll be able to answer you this afternoon. Oh yeah, we're, uh, there's also a yo-yo swap on Creative Crew. Unfortunately, I can't I can't do it this go around because I just have so much stuff going on, so much. But uh, I really wish that I could. That looks like so much fun. Jackie, yeah, uh, like in the video, I showed how you could have your phone sitting upright. And then, uh, you know how if you turn your phone sideways, it adjusts the video or whatever you're watching. You can use it, your phone sideways on that too. Okay, everybody, we're going to just jump in, okay? I have an array of stuff. <laughs> we're going to be making a square pin cushion today and a circle one. So if you want to make the circle one, just grab you a circle uh, that is the size that you want to make your pin cushion, right? It could be a coffee canister lid. It could be a jelly jar lid. It could be spaghetti jar lid. Maybe you have some acrylic circle templates you could use. Grab anything that is the shape that you are going for and the size, okay? It can your pin cushions can be however big or small you want them to be. So I just have a circle template here for the round one we're gonna make. Y'all, I really want you to just be creative with your pin cushions. Look at this. Look how lovely this is. And I've always had a soft place in my heart for crazy quilts. It was a crazy quilt was one of the very first quilts that I ever made. So I've always loved them. So of course, I would love a pin cushion, Ooh, just like this. And this one, she used a vintage handkerchief. So we're going to do that with one of them. But think of all the handwork, all the little embroidery that you could do yourself on your pin cushions too. She even went back and added a few beads right in the lacy part. Of the uh, of the handkerchief so let's just start pulling out some stuff I have some stuff okay this is a great big jar of uh, well some of these are very very old antique buttons and vintage buttons that my friend in Vermont Miss Everly gave me on one of our trips up there so these were part of her button stash and I have this jar close by for whenever I want to add a button to my projects. And then I think about my sweet friend in Vermont. So I have a button assortment if we want to throw a button in there. I have, let's see, I just have this great big bin because I was just like, what can I gather for? <laughs> what can I gather for these pin cushions? This is a basket of white and beige scrap fabrics. There's just an assortment. We're going to use some of that today. I do have this bag of uh, handkerchiefs that I purchased at uh, an antique store in Northern Virginia one time. So let's go through and look at those. We're going to add one of these. Oh, look at the lace on the blue one. Isn't that gorgeous? This looks like it was tatted. My sweet friend Maureen uh, is a tatting artist. She's working on doing some tutorials to show you how to make this, how to make that lace. So, yes, that's gorgeous. Let's see what else is in here. Wow, isn't that delicate? That is pretty, too. This looks like it has some needle tatting on the edges. Let's see, what is this one? Uh, 
That is gorgeous. It's not exactly the look I'm going for for this one. Let's see what this is. Wow, look at that. Okay, which one do I want to use for today's pincushion? We'll go with the blue one. <laughs> so yeah, you can uh, at yard sales, thrift stores, antique shops, look for all kinds of linens that you could use for your pincushions. I also have a bag of some scrap laces that we might add. And then, y'all, I just have my scrap bucket <laughs> of off cuttings from my quilt blocks and bindings. Like, there's the orange binding I just put on that quilt that I finished. Salvage edges, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, we're just going to be working from this. I want you to just grab some scraps. Grab some scraps. Oh, look. See, this would make the perfect little round template. The lid from my coffee can. <laughs> so, all right, I want to give you two ideas today, and this is not the limit of what you can do with these pin cushions, y'all. But I know I don't want to add orange. Let's put that down there. But maybe these two ideas will spark your creativity. All right, I went into Inkscape, and I just, I know it's mirror imaged, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I just typed in friends always and printed this out with my printer, okay? Because I really like the fonts and I sometimes need a guide to go by. So I just went into Inkscape and typed that out. We're going to actually trace this with some fabric markers onto one of our pieces for today. These are the Marvy fabric markers. I've used them in a couple of videos here on my channel, but I really like these. And uh, they're permanent, and you could wash this if you wanted to. Use these markers in a project that's going to be laundered. So I really like these. Let's see. And I also have, let's see, I have some 80-20 batting. It's the really thin stuff, y'all really thin see how thin that is we're kind of doing a crazy quilt block quilt as you go pin cushion today so yes you could also use uh, something like felt uh, a piece of flannel a piece of muslin I'm gonna be using this really thin 80 20 batting okay as the base of my pin cushion All right, so focus, Lisa. The first thing I want to do, let's work on tracing this onto a piece of fabric. Let me find a piece of fabric that I like. Y'all, I'm not even ironing this <laughs> because my iron is way over there and I can't reach it. All right, so here I have, I believe this is just a good quality muslin. It feels like a muslin. I don't even know how long I've had it. <laughs> but I'm going to lay that right over top of my template that I printed out. And I'm going to trace this. Now, y'all, you could use a fabric marker. Or you could use a, a water-soluble marker. Or a heat erasing marker. What color do I want to use? If you used something that disappears, you could hand embroider, hand stitch your words instead of using a fabric marker, right? You could certainly do that. Let's go with the blue. <laughs> Let's go with the blue. So there's all different sediments that you could print out with your printer or just freehand write something out. I knew I would need a little guide to go by. So I'm just going to trace this right onto my piece of fabric. Just like this. If you want to stabilize the fabric while you're tracing, 
You could use a piece of freezer paper. That would really just stabilize the fabric and keep it from shifting around like you see what's happening here, but I'm just going to work with it. You could also use a light box if you have trouble seeing through the fabric. A light box works really well or a light pad like the one that I have. And there we go. Friends always. That's traced right onto my fabric. We could do all kinds of little doodles on there. I'm going to bring in the red marker and just draw a little heart like that. Like that. There we go. This is really just an example. <laughs> Oh, it's so great to see y'all. So great to see you. So let me move this out of the way. So I have my sediments drawn onto the fabric for one of them, and I have a handkerchief that we're going to use on the other. Let's go ahead and cut ourselves two pieces of batting, and I'm just going to cut these just any size. This is just going to be the base and the foundation for the top of our pin cushions. What I love about pin cushions like this is y'all, you don't have to have a pattern <laughs> and it, you're just sewing and creating, right? Sometimes some of the prettiest things that I've made were made without a pattern. So here's this one. And here's that one. There we go. Just reading through the comments, if y'all have any questions specifically for me, if you type them in all caps, that makes them a little bit easier for me to scroll through the comment section and see your questions. I'm so glad you're here and hanging out with me today. All right, so let's designate this one as my circle and this one as my square. Let's just start piecing this one together. Y'all, I'm not using, <laughs> using an iron. I'm not measuring. I am just cutting and sewing, cutting and sewing. I have my rotary cutter and a straight edge ruler. I'm just gonna start cutting some random shapes. All of these little offcuts will go right into my little scrap bucket. Just like this. Cutting random. I think I need a new blade <laughs> in my rotary cutter. Sometimes it doesn't cut all of the little threads. So there is the very beginning of our round pin cushion. I'm gonna just bring this in and lay it right down over top of my batting. Now you could pin this in place if you want to, or you could use a glue stick and just put a little bit of glue and heat set that and dry it. Uh, because my iron is far away, I will probably just use a pen, even though I'm a fan of the glue. <laughs> I can't quite reach my iron. So I'm just gonna hold that in place and we're bringing over scraps, y'all. We're bringing over scraps. What we want to make sure is that when we add our scraps, that the scraps extend the edge of the side that you want to add your scrap to, right? So if you wanted to add it, the first piece to this side, it needs to go beyond the two edges, top and bottom. I'm gonna add this piece to the top first, cause why not? <laughs> so it needs to extend beyond the two edges of my fabric. 
So we have the right side up on the first piece. The second piece we're adding, we're going to flip pretty side down and just align that up right there. See the edges go beyond our original first piece. Line up those raw edges. And then we're gonna sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. So let me make sure I have that set. The, my cameras keep messing up, so don't mind my face. It's frozen. <laughs> it's frozen right there. But you can still see me coming in with the sewing machine and the pieces. I've set a quarter inch seam allowance, and now we're just going to sew this seam starting at the edge from one side to the other. Just like that, there's our first seam. <laughs> my cameras are all so crazy today. There's my first seam from edge to edge, and I know I used a white thread, so it's not gonna really show up. We're gonna flip over the piece we just added, and I'm just finger pressing, y'all. I'm just finger pressing. If you want, you could add another pin right there and hold that down into place if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and do that. Just like that. Now let's go ahead and add a piece right through here. So let me find something pretty, something pretty, pretty, and that's long enough. That looks long enough. That will go just like that. And I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and snip it. Do y'all hear my neighbor's car? <laughs> I think he thinks he's a race car driver. We're just snipping, flipping, and sewing. So here's my third piece. I'm going to flip pretty sides together. And I'm just going to line them up just like this. Now, on this bottom part, I do want to make sure that the fabric overextends past the first piece, right? This piece, I don't even care about. We're not going to see that. I'm just lining that up just like this. You could throw a pin in there if you need to. I'm going to move this back to the sewing machine. So now you'll see me flipping back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and start right at the edge of the first piece. I know it's gonna be hard to see because it's white on white. So there's that piece. We'll bring it back over and we can flip that and just finger press it right down and open. Just like that. Isn't that going to be so pretty? Just like that. Woo, that's so pretty. I love that. So now, just working around in a circle, let's go ahead and attach a piece here. So let me find something like this. That's kind of pretty. I'm just gonna snip a piece off of that. Just like that. Yeah, that'll look good. We're just gonna line that up. You could throw a pin in there if you want to. Ah, uh, y'all are so welcome. Y'all are so welcome. It's so great to see you. 
We're just having some fun, a creative time today. My cameras are all messed up, but that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. We're going with the flow today. We're going to go ahead and sew the seam for this next piece. And this is it. I know it kind of looks a little complicated when you just see the finished pin cushion, but this is it, y'all. You're just adding pieces and adding pieces. Let's go ahead and add another piece right down here. That would look neat. That would be pretty. Do I want to add a brown piece? Sure, that'll frame it nicely. <laughs> That'll be pretty. Let's just finger press that and throw a pin in there to hold it nice and flat. And we'll add this piece. Dun, 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 dun. And I think, too, one of the reasons why I love, one of the reasons, let me see if I can fix this camera. It's going to get on my last nerve. <laughs> one of the reasons I love these is because I guarantee you there will never be two that look exactly the same, right? Totally unique pieces. Each one is totally different. Goodness gracious. There we go. <laughs> Each one is totally different. I'm just going to hold that right down with a pin. So there we are. Now we can start working on this side. Let's bring in some more tidbits and who knows what else. Ooh, here's a green piece. Ah, that's sweet. So I know it's probably hard to see. Right there. There's the edge of the very first piece. I'm just going to line up this green piece with that edge there. Everything else is going to just overhang that raw edge that's okay you could take a pair of scissors and trim that away if you wanted to I'm just gonna leave it because we're using the batting as a foundation for this piece. We're actually quilting our pin cushion as we go along, so that's done. But you could always go back in and do more quilting if you wanted to. Let's see, let's find something. Let's find a piece of lace. Well, first let me make sure that that will fit in there. No, actually. <laughs> the lace would end up getting cut off. I need to add one more piece just to make this bigger than the circle template I wanna use. I'll make that bigger on the screen here in just a minute. I'm just gonna add a long piece. Let's find something that's really long. That'll do. I'm adding the last piece right in here. I need to actually take that pin out so it doesn't get in the way. We have one more seam for this one. I 
feel so scatterbrained today, y'all. <laughs> I'm so scatterbrained. I'm just going to take this off. You're not going to see my face for a few minutes, but you can hear me, right? So here's the last piece that we just added. Just like that, we'll just finger press that down. So isn't that going to be so adorable? Now at this point, you could come in with all kinds of embellishments, right? You could actually hand stitch uh, some words. You could make flowers and leaves, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you could come back and do some quilting, additional quilting if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave this one just like it is. We'll do some additional quilting on the square one. I do think, though, that I'm going to just add a piece of lace somewhere because y'all know me. <laughs> I'm a lacy kind of person. <laughs> Let's figure out where we're going to cut our circle. Yeah, actually, we'll do it just like this. This brown piece, actually, I didn't even need to add. I'm going to bring in a marker and just mark my circle all the way around. I won't actually be able to see that through the black part of the pin cushion. That's okay. I'll just do it free-handed. <laughs> there we go. Can you see that circle? I want to add a piece of lace right, well, no, yeah, like that. I think that would be sweet. I'm going to bring this to the sewing machine and just do a top stitch, like a zigzag stitch, just to sew that down. <laughs> go away, Lisa, go away. Just to sew this down, let's pick a zigzag stitch. That's good. And now we can just work on cutting out the circle shape of our pin cushion. Just like this. Now y'all might want to actually, when you flip over your pieces that you've just added, you might want to actually press it so that it stays nice and flat. I'm just finger pressing mine because I can't reach the iron. But if you finger press it, your pieces won't flip up like this, right? They'll lay nice and flat. Now I'm only going to add batting to the front side of these pin cushions, but you could repeat this whole process for the back of your pin cushion as well. So all of these little bits, that will all go right into my scrap bucket because <laughs> I save all of that. I save all of it. So there is our circle crazy quilt pin cushion top. Okay, so let's pick out a fabric for the back of that pin cushion. 
I'm going to use the same template and just cut out a round section just like this. Same exact size. Just like this. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that out too. How can I add my photo here? Valora, I don't know that YouTube, I've never seen where you can add a photo in the comment section on YouTube. But if you have Facebook and you're part of the Creative Crew group, you could add your photos there. We would all love to see them. But if you don't do Facebook and you want to send me a photo, you could jump over to my Etsy shop because through Etsy, you can send me a message with photos and I'd love to see it. I wish that YouTube offered uh, an option to add photos in the comment section, although I imagine with the randomness of uh, <laughs> YouTube, that might be actually dangerous too because you never know what kind of photo someone's going to add to the comment section of your video, right? <laughs> oh, I've been dealing with some meanies on YouTube here lately. Not friendly, not friendly. So here's the top and the back of our round pin cushion. So when we sew this, we'll just flip it right sides together. Make sure that lays down nice and flat. Right sides together. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and pin this one piece because it doesn't want to lay flat. It wants to be difficult like my webcam. <laughs> Just like that. And you'll sew all the way around, making sure to leave an opening for your pin cushion to be turned right side out, right? Big enough to allow for that. So we're going to set that aside. So there's our round one. I think I love that so much already. And here's the batting and the handkerchief for our second one. Now I'm just going to take a second. Can I join your Facebook group? Absolutely, Miss Jennifer. Jennifer, uh, there is... A a link in the description box that brings you over to Lisa Cape and Quilts. And uh, you can join me there. And I also have a group called the Creative Crew. There's a link for that as well. Make sure that uh, you answer the security questions. There's only two of them, but we like to verify it's not a fake account, right? Give me a second. I'm going to try... There we go. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to do this each and every time. I want to add my camera. There we go. <laughs> Glory day. Yeah, make sure to uh, answer the two security questions, and then we'll add you in, okay? Very easy to share pictures, ask questions, lots of creative uh, members there in the creative crew group they're so helpful and uh, we just started doing swaps it's a it's a fun fun time thank you Mimsy thank you Mimsy for sharing those links right there Mimsy shared the links Angela said I'm not sure you got the first pat centered when you drew the circle that's okay that's okay because I want it to be quirky. You could, of course, center your centerpiece directly in the center if that's what you wanted to do. I like mine a little whimsical, a little haphazard, if you will. But you could certainly center and exactly, you know, you could be as precise with your pin cushions as you want. Uh, I'm just going with the flow on these. Kit Kat, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm struggling today, y'all. I'm struggling. Thank you so much.
Let's see, I'm just trying to go through and see if there's any other questions before we start this other one. What model is your sewing machine? Let's see, I have a Juki HZL F600 and I love it. I love it. I did a review of this machine. The video is here on my channel when I first got it. And uh, now that I've owned it for over a year, I should probably do an update. There's some things that I absolutely love about this machine. There's like one thing that I would change about it. And I've learned a lot about this machine as I've used it. So maybe I should do an updated video. <laughs> All right, so while I have this camera working, <laughs> I don't know that it's in the right spot. Hold on a second. I want you to see most of my working area. So let's just put me up here. This one we're gonna make uh, sort of square, like the one that Sally gave me. Here's the one that she gave me, and it has a vintage a uh, handkerchief that someone hand embroidered the flowers and the leaves on. Isn't that gorgeous? For those of you who are enjoy handwork, wow. Wow. I hope that you get creative and do some handwork on some pin cushions. Uh, <laughs> I don't think y'all want to sit here for five hours while I do a couple flowers. So for this one, I'm just going to leave it blank and simple. Blank and simple. I have this handkerchief that we got in Northern Virginia. And I really just want to use a snippet of it, right? So I'm, I know this is going to, this is really going to blow your mind. Some of you are going to be like, oh, I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> but let me just tell you, I will never put this in my pocket and use it. It will not get used any other way. And so this way, it lives on in other ways, right? We're gonna repurpose the life of this and nothing will get wasted. I just wanna say that before I take a pair of scissors to it, right? <laughs> I know, for some of you, this part might be upsetting. I'm just cutting a little swatch right off of it, just like that. So we're going to be actually using this part. But let me just show you, there's so much left of this piece that I could make 10 more pin cushions or put this in 10 more other projects. So this does not get thrown away. It gets saved and it goes into another project. <laughs> All right, so there's that little swatch. Let me find a fabric that this will look really cute with. Let's see. I like that. It's not big enough. Let me see if I have a big enough piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, here we go. All right. So I'm just bringing in a piece of fabric that I'm actually going to stitch this to, okay? Because I want all of this pretty lace in there. So I actually need to attach the handkerchief to a base fabric first, right? So I'm just gonna bring this over, just like this. And I'm gonna do a straight stitch right on the edge of this to sew the handkerchief part down to a base fabric. All right, I'm going to show you that and probably mess up my camera while I do that. <laughs> probably. We'll fix it. So I'm just going to hold this right in place. I'm going to do a straight stitch right on the edge and sew these two pieces down to one another. like that. Simple straight stitch. Okay. 
So there we go. Isn't that going to be so pretty? So pretty. Oh, the camera's still working. <laughs> so there we go. We've secured the handkerchief down to the base fabric. Now I'm just going to cut this base fabric a little bit bigger. No patterns. Valera, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Thank you so much. This goes in the scrap bucket. And here's our first piece for our square one. I'm just going to bring that batting right back in. And we're going to lay this down just like that. Right in the middle. I'll take a pin and just pin that right into place. Just like that. So now we can just start building on to this part, right? And when we sew something and attach fabrics to these sides, it'll secure this lace right down on these edges, just like that. So now we get the fun part of adding pieces in. I'm not sure why I'm drawn to this fabric so much today, but I am. So let's do it. <laughs> now I'm just going to go. I don't want to keep switching the cameras back and forth, y'all. Just like we did with the circle one, I'm just sewing this seam, and I'll be right back. Let me do that so I don't keep messing up the webcams since they don't want to cooperate today. Just doing a straight stitch. Did you hear that machine go? <laughs> so there's my straight stitch. I'm going to just finger press that into place. You might want to take an iron and just press that seam nice and flat. There's our first piece. Now we can bring in, let me dig at the bottom of this. And see what we can find. Ooh, that's pretty. Yes, let's do that. Dig through your scraps. Cut them off. Add them to your raw edges just like this. See, this one just extends beyond. That's okay. Now I'm going to take and sew this one right through there. And we'll flip that open. So yesterday, we drove all the way from close to Mobile, Alabama, to Williamsburg, Virginia. <laughs> that was a long drive. That was a really long drive. We got home late last night, but we it was very uneventful, nice and safe drive. It was a long, long day though. Ooh, that's gonna be so pretty. Let's see what we can find. So anybody from uh, Alabama, that was the first time I had been to Alabama. I loved it. It's so pretty there. It's so pretty. Let's see what we have here. Green and this, uh, not for this project. Let's pick something else. Let's pick something else. I like the green. Let's actually add it right there and make that centerpiece a little bit smaller. See, no rules. <laughs> There's no rules. Just get creative. And whatever strikes your fancy, that's what you're doing, right? We 
we'll flip that open just like that. Throw a pin in there and I want to add another piece. Another piece. Let's see. Sheila, you have a lot of family in Alabama. Wow, it was so pretty. That was the first time I'd ever been there. And I loved it. Y'all, I don't know what this stuff is called that hangs on all of the limbs of the trees. Does anybody know that? The technical name for the moss. Is it moss that hangs off of the limbs of the trees? Oh, it was gorgeous. I got to actually see some in person. <laughs> Y'all, we're just adding. We're going to add that right in there just like this. I almost, almost didn't go live today because I felt like I was so unorganized and not ready. But y'all, these pin cushions are so easy that you can just sit down with some scraps and start creating. So I was like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do the live today, even though you have nothing ready, Lisa. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to cut off a piece of this. Because that'll be gorgeous. That'll be pretty. And now I'm just going to add it to this section right here. Just like that. We're going to flip that open and just like that, I think that'll be a nice size pin cushion. It'll actually be rather large, right? <laughs> Let's see. Wanda said, I was wondering if you made these up for craft shows, what price would you put on them to sell? Well, Miss Wanda, I believe, wow, I believe that that's going to differ from person to person, right? Sometimes the cost to go into those craft shows, sometimes it's not free to enter, right? You have to pay a booth fee. So that's going to affect the prices of your stuff. Sometimes you're in an area where the people who are coming to your craft show have spending money, right? And they don't mind paying for quality goods, the right prices that you put on stuff. And sometimes you go to craft shows where... Uh, maybe you're in an area where people uh, just don't know the value of handmade pieces and they're not willing to pay for them. So, you know, depending on which craft show you go to, you might charge more for your piece, like the actual price that it should be. And sometimes you go to a craft show and you have to lower your prices. It's, it's crazy. I would maybe do some uh, research online. Uh, search prices of pin cushions that are similar to the ones that you want to sell and uh, get a good ballparking starting price. That's what I would do. <laughs> Sarah, I've seen those hat pin cushions. That was such a good idea. Someone used a CD, yes. That was such a good idea. Mimsy, I just want to thank you so much for moderating and keeping an eye on everything. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Paula, you're from, you're in Alabama. I loved it. I loved it there. I wish we could have stayed longer, but Harlan had, uh, he actually went to work today, y'all, in person for something. That's the first time in months that he's actually gone to work to do something. So we had to be back today because he had to be there for that.
All right, so let's see. I think this is going to give us a good size for this square pin cushion. Let me clear out some space here. This one, we won't add any lace to. We have the pretty handmade lace on this center handkerchief, right? Let's let that be the feature of this pin cushion. We might add a button though here in just a second. So once you've built up all the fabrics you want to use, you see I still have some batting that's over here on this side, but that's okay. Because I'm actually just going to square this up and trim away everything that hangs over the edges. And this part, you can make your pincushion as big or as small as you want it to be. So let's go ahead and cut this first cut. That'll go in the scrap bucket. <laughs> let's just line this up and we'll cut off this section. Uh, that looks good. Like that. We'll flip her around. We'll cut off this section down here. And then we're just cutting one more section off and she'll be all ready for a back. Ooh, look how pretty she is. Oh. Yes. Let's go ahead and add a button to this one because why not, right? There was this little square button. Let's add that. That's cute. So I have some embroidery floss here and that's what I'm gonna use. Some of my Nana's embroidery floss just to sew this little button right into place. And because blue seems to be the feature fabric right in the middle, I'm gonna use some blue embroidery floss. Hopefully I have a needle that will work. Yes, I do. There we go. So at this point, I would go ahead and do any hand sewing that you wanna do, like adding buttons or beads, any of that stuff. Now would be the great time to do that before you add your back to this. But you know what? I also just remembered that I said I would show you the quilting. If you wanted to go back, this is quilted already, right? We quilted it as we joined all these pieces. But if you want to do any additional quilting, now would be a great time to do that. So at the risk of messing up my cameras one more time, let's switch over. Let's just do some straight line quilting, stitching in the ditch some of these pieces. This part, of course, is optional. If you don't want to do this part, you don't have to. But I do love the look of that. Oh, goodness, yeah. So let's go in and do a little bit more. You could use any of the decorative stitches on your sewing machine. That would be pretty. And I'll trim all these little thread tails here in just a minute.
See, I think that just adds just one more element of design right there. So you can do all the quilting that you want to. Ooh, our camera still works. Yay. <laughs> so let's just trim these little thread tails. And y'all, this video is not real technical. I'm just showing you how you can do this and you don't need a pattern. You can just have fun creating something really, really pretty. Now let's figure out where this button would look pretty. There. I'm going to add my button right to that corner. No. E. That's going to be close to my seam allowance. Yeah, let's add it there. <laughs> so I'm just going to come up from the bottom. From the bottom. I'm going to leave a little thread tail on the back, big enough so that I can tie a knot, right? We'll add this button. And then go down through to the back. Imagine how pretty this would be if you hand stitched someone's monogram. Wouldn't that be such a good idea? Now I'm going to go ahead and just tie this into a knot. Just like this. All those thread tails, get those in there. There we go. Each time I make a new pin cushion, it takes place of my newest favorite one. <laughs> oh, I love, this might be my newest favorite one. I don't know. Spanish moss. It's everywhere in the low country of South Carolina. I did see it in South Carolina too. I did. It was gorgeous. Why not sewing the button on by machine? Brenda, you certainly could. You certainly could sew that on by machine if you wanted to. Uh, for me, it's just as simple and fast just to hand stitch that on and tie a knot. But if, if you want to add your buttons by machine, absolutely you could do that. Just going through to make sure that I'm not missing any questions. If you have asked a question and I've missed it, retype it out for me so I don't miss your question. So here's our square one. Now I just need a back for this one too. So for this one, because I cut it an odd shape, <laughs> I'm just gonna lay it right there like that. And I'll use the actual top as a template to mark the back side of my pin cushion. You don't have to buy any special rulers. You don't have to buy anything special templates. I'm going to cut that out right on the line and then we're ready to sew these together. And you go in the scrap bucket. So here's the pretty front of our pin cushion, and here's the back. Just gonna line up those edges just like that. I'll throw a pin in there or two just to keep it in place. Uh, now, for my seam allowance, when I sew this body together, y'all, I'm stuck on a quarter inch seam. That's just me, but you can use a smaller seam allowance if you want to. Okay, I'm, I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way around, remembering to leave an opening 
to leave an opening to turn this right side out. So we'll stop and do some back stitches. Break the thread and scoot down a little bit. So there's the opening. And now the other sides we can just sew from one edge to the other. So there is our square one. We'll flip that out right side out in just a minute. And now we will sew all the way around our circle one that we created together. The circle one might actually take me a second. <laughs> Now here is where we started. Don't forget to leave an opening so that you can turn this right side out. So I'm just going to take some back stitches right there to lock that into place. And so here are our two pin cushions. Yay! Now before I turn these right side out, I am going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to just cut the bulky part right off of the corners of the square one. That'll help our corners be a little bit more pointy, right? And then for this circle one, I think it might be a good idea to just go around the circle. I'm not going to do it where the opening is, but here and there along this circled edge, I'm just going to make some notches about a half an inch apart, maybe. Right in that seam, being careful not to cut into that seam. And I think that this might actually help that seam be nice and circle all the way around. Just some notches. Being really careful not to cut into those stitches. All the way around. This is probably the hardest part of the whole pin cushion. <laughs> Making sure not to clip that stitch. So I've been seeing some pictures of your pincushion creations on the Creative Crew group. I love seeing your pictures. Now we can go ahead and turn these right side out.
Ooh, Brenda said a pair of pinking scissors are so helpful. Yes. Yes, and if I had mine close by, I would have pinked the edges. But of course, <laughs> they're not anywhere close next to me. So now we're just going to be flipping, flipping this right side out. This just takes a little bit of patience. So one of the videos that I'm going to be doing next week, y'all, I'm, I'm really excited about it because, you know, I love uh, quilting and crafting on a budget, right? Uh, the other day in a Zoom, I think it was, we were talking about pin cushions and what you can fill them with. And we were talking about steel wool. And I said I needed to go to Lowe's to get some steel wool. And my good friend Maureen, who's the moderator of Creative Crew Group, she's like, just go to the Dollar Tree. They have it there. I was like, huh, I didn't know that. So I went to the Dollar Tree, and they had all kinds of stuff, y'all, all kinds of stuff that you could stuff your pin cushions with. And so I'm going to do a Dollar Tree pin cushion stuffing video. <laughs> That's sometime next week. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that so cute? That's so cute. So there's our circle one. Let me turn this square one. That's going to be one of the videos coming up. Oh, I have this one pinned together. No wonder. <laughs> so this is our square one. Rose, I'm so glad you joined along. Thank you so much. Yeah, like Kit Kat said, uh, I have a huge array of different kinds of videos on my channel. I'm, I'm a quilter, and my passion is t-shirt quilts and memory quilts. But I love applique and patchwork, too, so you'll find all kinds of those videos. Uh, printing on fabric. Screen printing. Uh, wow ink tints on fabric, ah, all kinds of stuff. Still turning, still turn, journals, yes. <laughs> My mind is drawing a blank. I really just still have the humming of street noise in my head from driving all day. And in my other tutorials that are not live, I fast forward this part so you don't have to sit and watch me struggle as long. <laughs> there we go. There she goes. I'm just going to poke out those little corners. And all I have, all I have this time right now on hand is rice. So we're going to fill it with rice. Someone was saying, and oh, I forget who it was now that I want to say that. Who was it that said if they use rice in their pin cushions, they put a little plastic bag in the pin cushion first. You know, like um, a sandwich bag or some kind of little plastic bag. And then they fill it with rice so the plastic bag is not, you know, is holding the rice in. And uh, to keep it from going rancid or to keep it from attracting little buggies. They just put the little plastic bag right in there and then fill it and close it up. Wow, isn't that... I'm going to hold this up close. This is the one that we did quilting on. Isn't that so cute? Now the opening, we're just going to turn that just like this. And we will hand stitch that closed just like that. So let's go ahead and throw some throw some stuff in there. Rosemary asked, have you used stamps on fabric? I have. Since you asked, and I have it right here. <laughs> this is the first pin cushion of the pin cushion series. That's a stamp. I stamped that onto fabric and then used the Inktense pencils to color it in. So you'll see that. There's a link in the description box 
that brings you to the pin cushion playlist. That's the very first pin cushion that we made. But I think I do have other videos here on my channel where I see, oh, quilt labels. There's a playlist for that as well. I stamp on fabric in some of those videos too. Let's see if we can do this without making a huge mess. What type of ink? Um, I showed the ink pad that I used in that video. It was made, uh, it's a multimedia type of ink and it's permanent on fabric. Uh, I would say if you're making like a pin cushion and you know it's not going to get washed, you could really use any kind of ink, right? Uh, the only time I really pay attention to the type of ink with my stamps on fabric is if the project will ever be washed, then I want one that is good and permanent on fabric, right? Let's see if I can fill this without making a huge mess. Probably not like that. Go oh, in there. There goes my race car driver neighbor again with his car. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that or not. Mimsy, thank you so much for posting the links and keeping an eye out on our chat. Oh, you have some stamping up stamps. Yeah, well, um... You know, I don't know if your stamps require a special ink or not. <laughs> uh, I call myself a multimedia artist. I work with paint and fabric and all kinds of textiles and mediums. And I mix up everything. And uh, I've never messed up a stamp yet. And I've used speedball paints on my stamps but if you have stamps that are sensitive to ink or paint then you might want to check the requirements for the stamps that you're using <laughs> I just I just use it all right well that's gonna take almost all of the rice that I have Can I do it? Can I do it? Oh goodness, now I'm gonna make a mess. So that's got some good weight to it. We'll go ahead and finish filling this up with some batting scraps. Or some polyfill. Let me grab some polyfill. This might be one of my most unorganized lives yet, but that's okay. That's all right. I'm just glad I didn't have to cancel because I'd already told everybody we were going live today, so. When you use freezer paper to transfer images, do you use specific fabric? Wow, Rose, I've used all kinds of fabric. Muslin is one of my favorite, favorite things to do, but I've used Kona cotton, I've used uh, keepsake calico fabric, I've used Quilt shop fabric. I've stamped and printed on all of that stuff. <laughs> mm. 
I'm just going through and stuffing some of this polyfill in there. I really just want you to see what this is going to look like all stuffed and finished. And I will pin the opening closed. I'm not going to make you sit <laughs> for however long it takes me to stitch this closed, but I'll just pin it shut. But you'll get the idea of what this is going to look like all finished. Right? See, we can add a little bit more. This, y'all, is just polyfill, which I use a lot in my pin cushions. I use a lot of it. But you can fill them with all kinds of stuff. I did not want to go back to Harlan one more time and ask him for <laughs> another jar of walnut shells. He's like, you're using all my walnut shells, woman. Although, you know what? He really didn't mind. Okay, let me throw some pins in here just to keep that rice in. If some falls out, that's okay. I'll fix it this afternoon. Oh, goodness. Isn't that so cute? So here's our square one with the little lacy handkerchief added to it. Y'all, you could get so creative with all the different things that you could put in this space. A monogram, flowers, all kinds of stuff like that. Isn't that so cute? Oh, goodness. So let's go ahead and throw some stuffing in this round one so you can see that too. Uh, Rose, it will help if you stabilize the fabric before you stamp on it. And I just use freezer paper because that comes off really easy off the back. And you can keep using the freezer paper over and over again, right? So I just use some freezer paper. I have seen people use uh, labels, like printing labels on the back of their fabric to stabilize. But the labels I have work so well and they're so sticky that they're kind of hard to take off when you're done. <laughs> so I, my favorite is freezer paper. I'm just throwing some rice in here to make this a little weighted. Like that. And I've managed to do most of it without making a huge mess. So that's awesome. Yay! Now let me just finish stuffing this up with some polyfill. The opening is a little bit smaller on this round one. So yes, uh, so uh, I'm thinking that we're keeping the names for the pincushion swap uh, secret until we get our pincushions from our swap buddy, right? Or the person who got our name. So I have my person. I'm really excited <laughs> to make her a special pincushion. And I cannot wait to see whoever got my name. I cannot wait to see the pin cushion that you make. I feel like a five-year-old at Christmas time, really. 
it's good to have things to be excited about, y'all. It's good to have something to be excited about. Just stuffing, stuffing, stuffing. My circle seam might not have been exactly perfect, but that's okay. I'm just stuffing stuff right down into that seam. Rose, yes, we had the, uh, the invitation was open for about a week and it just closed yesterday for the pin cushion swap uh, over on the creative crew group. However, it's been so much fun that I imagine we'll be doing a lot more different kinds of swaps right now in the Creative Crew group, though you can, I believe you can still sign up for the yo-yo swap if you wanna do that. I'm actually, I'm not hosting the yo-yo swap, but uh, it is on the Creative Crew Facebook group if you wanna check that out. I have to pass on that one this go around. Let's add a little bit more in there, just like this. And I'm just going to pin this opening. So the opening part might be a little messy, that's okay. I'll hand sew it shut when we're done. So it's not gonna exactly be a perfect circle for the video. <laughs> but you'll get the idea, right? A yo-yo. Give me a second. I think I have a box of yo-yos over there. I'll show you what a yo-yo is. Okay, here's my round one. Granted, it's not perfectly round because I just pinned the opening shut, right? <laughs> Once I hand sew it, it'll be nice and round and pretty. Crazy quilt with some lace added pin cushion, right? Get creative, y'all with fabric markers, with stamps, doing some handwork, there's all kinds of things. I just did this nice and quick, so just to give you an idea, if you wanted to add some writing in there, but you're not good at hand stitching like me, you could still add it, use a fabric marker, right? Let me go grab a box of yo-yos, if I still have them. We got lucky. I have one little yo-yo in this box of stuff. Let's see. Here's a yo-yo. Well, who knows how long ago I made this. It's in a great big box of, I forgot I had this stuff. Does anybody else have a box that you forgot what all is in it? Well, look at all the elastics. I did not even know I had in buttons. Okay, so this is a yo-yo, just like that. You start off with a circle, and you sew a little seam, and then pull uh, that thread nice and tight, and it gathers it right in the center. So there's my little yo-yo from who knows how long ago. I had a whole box of them, but this is the first one that I came into with. But you can make quilts with these. You could add this to your pin cushion, just like that. That would be cute. Maybe not that cute on this one, <laughs> but 
But yes, all kinds of stuff you could use the yo-yos with. Can you quilt a yo-yo quilt on a long arm? Lynn, I would not want to. <laughs> uh, you might be able to. I personally would not want to do that. Patricia, there is a yo-yo swap on Creative Crew Group. Sharon is actually hosting that swap and organizing it. And uh, so, yeah, you can find out the details on the Creative Crew page. There is a post for it. Yes, so, wow. The circle one and the square one. Quilt as you go, crazy quilt blocks turned into pin cushions. I don't know, which one is your favorite, the circle or the square? I kind of like them both. I really like them both. And then this is, this is the one that has inspired this whole series that Sally made. I think they're adorable. I think I have a new obsession, a new addiction, <laughs> pin cushions. I have a great big stash of them <laughs> right next to my sewing machine now. But I'm really excited to make my swap person a custom pin cushion that is made just for them. I'm really excited about that. Rose said, I went to the site you suggested, but the, there's an error on the page. Did you click on one of Mimsy's links or did you go to the description box and click on one of those? So Jackie said the circle's her favorite. Sarah loves them both. Jackie said the circle because it's smaller. Yeah, it is a little bit smaller, but you know what? You can make these any size, right? No pattern. You can make it any size. You could do a great big piece and then make several pin cushions from that piece by cutting it into smaller sections, right? Brenda said that's like picking your favorite child. <laughs> that's so true. Oh my goodness. Good point. Because I do love all of them. I know it's been so, so great to see everybody today. And I appreciate y'all spending time with me, hanging out with me, despite all of the camera issues. Thank you so much. It's a technical difficulty day. And if you're watching on the replay and you're still here, thanks for sticking around. <laughs> thanks for sticking around. This is always the hardest part for me is hanging up because I love the interaction. I love the social time. I work by myself. And uh, so having the people who enjoy the same things I do, having that time to talk with you is really valuable to me. And it's always the hardest part is hanging up. Ruth said, both are beautiful, but she's drawn to the round one. Yeah, isn't that just, it's just gorgeous. I hope it has sparked some ideas for you to make your own. Right, Sarah? You could really just create one great big collage of fabric goodness, <laughs> right? And then just cut it all apart in sections and make a bunch. Piper said, I would love to see how you would turn one into a wrist one. And Sheila wants to see a pin cushion with a thread catcher on it. Those are good ideas. All right. So let me write that down. Dun, 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 dun. All right, Piper, a wrist 
and a cushion. And a Sheila pin cushion with thread catcher. Just to let y'all know, if you don't want to wait for my videos, <laughs> I've seen videos on how to do both of those here on YouTube by other creators. So if you have in mind a pin cushion and you want to get busy, y'all, there's so many great video creators out, th out there. And videos already exist for both of those topics. I've seen them. So you could do a search on YouTube if you don't want to wait for my video. But I'd be glad to show you. Uh, yeah, that's those are good ideas. Beverly, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. Barbara said, I know you can use elastic, but then you also need to see something to keep from stabbing yourself. Yeah, I think that would be... Uh, <laughs> my biggest problem too. And uh, I've heard that you can add like pieces of leather on the bottom of your pin cushions to keep the pins from going all the way through. We may spark the never ending pin cushion series. I know, Diva, you're so right. Uh, I had thought about going through next week with videos, but you know, we could always pop one in here and there. Glenda, I'm so glad uh, that this video is here for you today. Today's not been one of the greatest days for me as well. <laughs> right before we came on live, I was watching a funeral service online for Harlan's uncle. And uh, so this has been a great way to finish up today as well. So I'm glad that you were able to be here even through all of our technical that camera's not working I don't know why it was right before I hit the button <laughs> oh you missed all the good stuff work got in the way you can come back on the replay come back on the replay it's always here That's the page I went to, and it says there is an error. Which page did you go to? Oh, Facebook groups. I don't know if... Uh, here's an easy way to get to it, Rose. When you leave YouTube, go over to your Facebook, and in the search bar on your Facebook homepage, type Lisa Cape and Quilts. And my business page will come up, and you'll see me there. On my business page, there's a little blue button that says visit group. If you click on that button, it brings you over to creative crew. Now to join creative crew group, there are two security questions. They're really easy, but you have to answer both because we try to keep all the fake accounts out the best that we can answer the two questions and then you join in uh, and it'll take us a second. Uh, to accept you in because I'm here doing the live and uh, I'm not sure if Maureen might be watching the live as well so after the live we'll add you in oh Kit Kat I'm so sorry to hear about your pops mm. I'm so sorry I wish I could hug you Valera, thank you so much. Thank you. I needed that. Uh, I've had to deal with some mean people in the comment section the last couple of days, and I'm just like so frustrated over that. So thank you so much. <laughs> Maureen, yes, Maureen is here. She goes by Diva. She is a diva. You are a diva, Maureen. She's here watching the the live so no one is currently moderating the creative crew group but we do take really great precaution on who we let in and if you don't answer both we can't let you in okay margie you're off to make some scrappy pin cushions i'm so glad
Mimsy, yeah, I don't know why that's not working. Sometimes, you know, the internet is really iffy today. I don't know why it's not working. But thank you for trying. I'll have to check the link to make sure that's working, the one in the description box, because sometimes they, sometimes the links just mess up. I don't know why. Sheila says she has so many ideas for pin cushions her my and my quilt that is getting overloaded. Oh, I know. Sometimes you just have to turn off everything and just make one, right? Just focus on one. And when you get done with that, you can pick up something else. I know. This is so hard for me to decide which pin cushion to make. Well, it is, right? But just to let you know, if you're doing the pin cushion swap, you do not have to make specifically the ones that I've made videos for. You could make up your own totally unique creation, your own totally unique pin cushion. It doesn't have to be one of the ones from the videos in this series. Feel free to be creative and to make your own. Sandy, uh, I saw Mimsy, that's okay. I, I saw Sandy's comment, that's okay. Very good point, Miss Sandy. Very good point. <laughs> The link I copied and pasted isn't working. I will fix that after the live. Oh, you said, but the one in the description box is working. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why it's not letting you copy and paste it here in the comments, but thank you for trying. Valerie, you lost your dad on Wednesday. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Loss is not easy, right? Loss is not easy. Just know that you are not alone. I'm so glad you were able to spend some time with us today. All right, everybody. I'm off to clean up this great big mess that you don't see. Well, you see a little bit of it right here. <laughs> and I would flip you around to the bigger screen, but the camera is being all wacky doodle today. So I'm not going to mess with anything. You're just going to see my smaller little face as I say goodbye. If this is your first time here and you're just joining in, y'all, there's a huge play. Well, I say huge. This is video number eight in a playlist. In the description box, there's a link that brings you to all eight videos in one place. But y'all, there's so many pincushion videos out there that I hope that uh, you explore the YouTubes and see what all else is out there if you need further uh, inspiration. And I do plan on making some videos next week as well, including a Dollar Tree pin cushion stuffing idea video. So I'm kind of excited about that one. Oh, he's in Brazil. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Well, I know we are all scattered all over the place. Just know that we are sending you love from far away. Uh, Lynn, you've been sick a couple of months. I'm, I did not know that. I'm so sorry. I hope you're feeling better. I love the pin cushions too. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you're a rock star. Thank you. Thank you. It is nice, Karen, to have smaller little projects to do to break up the larger projects, right? 
It's been so great to spend time with y'all today. I hope that you visit me next week. I don't know what we're doing next week. It might be a pin cushion. It could be a quilt block. I have no idea. <laughs> My mind is just is so scattered today. So uh, until I see you next time, I hope you have fun creating. If you're on Facebook, feel free to share your pictures. We would love to see them. And if you're not on Facebook, stop over at my shop and send me some pictures through the message function in Etsy. I'd love to hear from you there. All right, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. I'll see you all next week, okay? Love you. Bye.